Hey guys, it's Steve. Um, what I'm going to do today is show you how I do my workflow. Um, I, it's pretty simple and straightforward the way I do it for the most part. Uh, we're going to use this image right here as a reference and I'll show you really quick how it's set up. So for me when I uh, do my artwork, I start with one layer, I mean the original layers, which is your line work. Pretty straightforward. And what I do is, I'll, after I do all the line work, I'll duplicate it. And the bottom, after I duplicate it, the bottom layer of the two will be all my colored work. It'll just be the plain flat base fills. Now, in between the top layer, the, the copy, and the original layer that has the color in it, I sandwich in between the highlights and the shadows. And to show you really quick, uh, the shadows is there and the highlights are right there now the way this works is I um with the top layer with excuse me with two duplicate layers one with the color and one with the line work the top line work cover will cover any imp or any imperfections with your highlights or your shadows so they're hidden underneath the top line artwork now for the shadows and the highlights themselves each layer is separate, you highlights and shadows. The shadows layers, the way I do those is that the layer itself has an opacity level of, let's see, this one's at 20. So everything that's going to be drawn on this layer right here is going to be 20% opacity. So I'll just work with straight black for the shadows. Now for the highlights. Uh, let's see what I got this one at for you guys. Oh, uh, this one's at 40. Make it pop out a little bit better. But if you notice, if I didn't have that top uh, line work layer up there, the highlights are going to go over the black and you're going to see them bleed over. By, by using the top layer for the line work, it covers that up. Now, that's pretty... Um, how do I say this? It, for shadows, it doesn't really make a difference because it's on black, so you're not going to see it, but it's going to make a big difference for highlights. Another thing I do normally do, it's not on this file, but for instance, all of, uh, let me unlock this really quick. Like all these pieces right here, these uh, fills, especially uh, ones that I put like right here, when I merge all this together, I normally have all these lines right here separate on a different layer because the reason is if you were to create this is what I usually do for my artwork is I'll actually create I'll duplicate the copy layer and uh, add it all together and that way I can put a border stroke around the actual image itself but by having those uh, fills so close to the actual uh, stroke line if you merge all those together you're going to get these jagged endpoints popping out here in random spots. So that's why I normally create all those fills for like the detail work on its own separate layer. And now we'll jump over and start a little quick demo on how to go about doing this. So for the, this, this will be just really quick, so bear with me. So I got a new layer down here. What I'm going to do is just create two circles. And I'm just going to merge these together really quick. So now what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer right here, and I'll name this one uh, color, and we'll go with line up here. Now in between these, I'm just going to create two quick or, uh, two quick layers. One I'll just name uh, shadows, and the other one will be highlights. All right. And I normally I just call them cuts, you know those uh, the fills I was talking about. I don't know why it's how I always named them. So for the first layer, which will be our color layer, I'm just going to select a color. Uh, we'll go with blue. So that layer's done. I mean, there's after you color it. I mean, you're straightforward down with that layer for right now. Now for the shadows, I'm going to select over here. And drop the opacity down to 30% hit enter and we'll go with black now I'm going to take out 
a stroke and just leave a fill and we'll start coloring. As I said before, it doesn't matter really for the black because it's going to blend in with the actual uh, lines or the you know the outline. But the problem is if you actually start doing other work uh, that's not just based on black outlines, if you went color colored lines, it's not going to work. So that's why I normally have a duplicate layer on top. So, I mean, the shadows are done. I mean, they like said this is really quick. And for the highlights, we'll just knock this one down to 50. And the benefit of putting all these on one layer, or doing it on one layer, you can adjust it all at once. And I'll switch this one over to white. And we'll just do some quick highlights really quick. So now if you didn't have this line work up here, that's what you'd see. Now what I'm going to try to well do is um, draw a quick uh, cut, I would a cut actually on the color layer to show you what happens when you do it that way. So, what I normally do, what we're going to do is make the, um, you know, the background layer for the stroke to make it a bordered outline for it. But being as I made these on the same layer as the fill color, I'm going to select them all, add them, and I'm going to add a stroke to it. Now, see, being as you added all these together, because you have that uh, fill on the actual line work, you're going to get these jagged. Uh, endpoints popping out here and that's what I was talking about that I usually keep all those on a separate layer just for that reason so if I actually take this and well first unlock this layer and bring it up I can now duplicate this layer here I'll lock the actual color copy or it'll turn it made into a copy now but I'll put that in the bottom so the copy we made, I'm going to select it all, or draw together, which it doesn't really, at this point, it doesn't really do anything, just for the fact it's, it's already two circles merged, but if you had like a huge piece, um, such as this right here, what you do is you uh, select everything, and go to the Pathfinder, and click Unite, or the Add, and then you'd actually add a stroke to it. So I'm going to change the stroke color to darker blue, and I'm going to put the alignment on the outside and increase it. So that's how you actually go about doing the, um, the, the bottom stroke outlines like I do with these. Uh, like for this one right here, I just just really quick, but you know I can change it and it changes everything along with it. So I hope this helps. I understand it's a really quick video. I I'm trying to get more of these out, but I hope this helps. I mean, this is pretty much my workflow standard for a lot of my illustrations. Unless I actually start doing character designs for um, games, it's it's pretty much the same thing, but I do it all in one layer. That way, you know, the arm's separate, and it looks the same as this, along with the, the body, the chest. It's, it's, like I said, it's the same way, but... It, it's all on one layer for each individual part. So I'd have the arm, the leg, they'd all be individually marked, but it'd all be the same process as this. But I hope this helps, and again, thanks for the support and continue watching.